Welcome back, everyone. Halloween Haunts 365. I'm Jerry. And I'm Terry. Look how clear we are. I love this fucking lens. <laughs> it is clear. Yeah, baby. Uh, we have a special guest for you today. Before we get into that, welcome all the new subscribers from our reels and shorts that have been really fun to make. Um, I got a whole four new ones to post next week, so that's exciting. Yes, you're having too much fun with this. Everyone's having too much fun. Everyone's liking it. I'm loving it. Mark off shared ours for theirs. The dogs beating their heads. I got one for Field of Screams, so I'm going to post that because our interview today, before we get into that, I'm all over the place. Make sure you like, subscribe, click the button right here. Click that button. We're on the road to the thousand. Yes, we are. Yeah, we got to hit that by September. That's my goal. Or yep. Terry gets fired. Yeah, because I don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but let's switch screens and introduce Tiny. Tiny. Tiny from Field of Screams. How are you today? I'm doing well. Um, this is my first time doing something like this. So this is going to be quite the experience for me. But I hope I can um, explain what I do and how I do it. In the best way I can. We're just going to, like I tell everyone, we're just going to bullshit about haunts. Something we all love. So, it's nice and easy. I'm just a normal, right, yeah, just, we're just normal people who love haunts and spend way too much time making podcasts. I wouldn't podcasts. say normal. Yeah, I wouldn't say normal <laughs> either. You know, I guess you're the most normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Tiny, tell us what you do at Field of Screams. So, I'm one of the rednecks out on the hayride. Um, that's the main gig. I also do the slaughterhouse on property, the, the first scene, the pigs. Um, but during the off-season, a lot of people know me by getting up close and personal in the gun room, the dinner party scene. That is uh, the one room that a lot of people I hear at the end of the night are like, I can't believe that thing went off. So, I, I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's one of the... Now, I'm give or take on hillbilly scenes. I'm honest here. But Feel the Screams one, with the fucking explosions and everything going off, it's one of the best around. Oh, yeah. It's a fun time out there. Um, it's usually me and my brother out there. Me and him switch back and forth who does gun. But we make it work, and we hope it's a good show when you guys come out and see it. Yeah, it, it's one of my favorite hillbilly scenes, hands down. And we've been a part of the den, and you shooting that off in there. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to show you some pictures of you in costume real quick. You're not going to be able to see them. But the first one is you guys sitting on the porch with the banjo, and you're holding the gun uh, on your yeah. back. That's me and my best friend and his buddy from up in his area. Um, I've acted with him for the past about five years i want to say so him and i have worked a lot together uh not just in hayride but also the den so um when we get together and act it brings out um a different level of backwoods that you haven't seen before coming from his area come from my area it's just a perfect chemistry oh that's awesome <laughs> now the second picture you guys by the still that blows the hell up oh uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the main things. You see the fire under there, but when people first come to that scene, they see me jump out, shoot the gun, and the gas can falls over. I'm not sure how well the guests are able to see that, and the fire travels along, big ass explosion. Everybody loves it. Yeah, it's it's an awesome scene. Then we have you for St. Patty's Day holding the rifle in the den. Yeah, that was, I believe, the first time I was in that room with a gun for St. Patty's. That mask that I'm wearing, it has like green paint on it. It was meant to be for the the waste uh, the toxic waste dump on the hayride. Oh, so okay. I was able to still talk to the customers, like, you know, do my skit lines <laughs> while having still like the mutated look for the wasteland. And I was like, man, I'm not going to be out in the wasteland again because I got a full crew this year. So what can I use this mask for? And I was like, hey, St. Patty's green. Give me some type of toxic like leprechaun. And I was like, let's try it. Yeah. And they're like, here, you want a gun? I was like, sure thing. Let's make this work. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have the headliner. You sitting at the table with the head and the it's a uh, Christmas yeah. one. Yeah. That was the most recent Christmas event. That was 
my mask I used for my first year at Field of Screams. I was the mortician in 2019. But uh, I haven't been back to that scene recently. So I'm trying to make um, a Scrooge-like character with a gun. So be on the lookout for that in 2025. Oh, a little mm. sneak peek there, dear. <laughs> and then we have you, final one, seated on the end of the hayride. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so That's cool. what started the Halloween bug for you? Interesting story. So um, I went to an amusement park a lot when I was a kid called Knobles, and I used to be very afraid of anything spooky, scary. So like um, the wolf sounds of the haunted house up there used to make me cry. <laughs> and one day, <laughs> I, my, I think it was my mother took me through and show me, hey, this stuff isn't real. Like, it's just meant to, you know, give you, like, a little spook. And ever since then, I've been attracted to that. I was, like, about 14, 15, I went to Field of Screens for the first time. And um, I walked through and watching the actors and what they do and how well they do it. I'm, like, I want to be a part of this. Like, this is really cool. I don't like to get scared myself. I get scared sometimes going through, like, scenes and whatnot because I'm not expecting it. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's interesting being on the other side. It kind of took away that like fear for me. And it also brought out a side of me that I don't usually show because being behind that makeup, you get to be whoever you want. You get to create this legend. Very awesome. So how long have you been haunting? I've been haunting for the past seven years. Um, I started out at Shocktoberfest in Sinking Spring. And from there, I moved to Field of Screams in 2019. And I've been acting there ever since. Okay. So that answers where did you start haunting? Mm -hmm. Oktoberfest. We haven't been back there in a while. No. We haven't. Uh you went over what attraction you work at at Field the Screens. Which one do you like better working at? Um, the one I enjoy working on the most, I, I have to say the Hayride. I love the ginormous area to play with. Um it's a different show every time you come through compared to a smaller area in the den. Where if you come through the second time, it's it's gonna not be the same show, but it's pretty similar. Yeah. But with being out there in the woods in the redneck scene, we have so much room to play with, thing different things to jump off of, and we make it fun. So I have to say that's my favorite. Very cool. That's awesome. So what does your typical night at the haunt look like? Like what time do you get there? What time do you have to head in the makeup? Just go over an evening for us. Um, I get there usually relatively early. Um, say we open at six, I'm usually there about three. I try and get first in for makeup so it isn't a rush to look and I'm out of there. But by the time they're done with my makeup, I go to the, the scene and set up. Where, where am I going to hide my ammunition for the night if I'm in the den? Um, where I go out to the redneck still, turning on the still uh, for the night, the fire and stuff. So, and then our manager comes through and tells us first wagon, and then pretty much we just transform into these um, deliverance characters. Like it's no longer, oh, Andrew, it's now tiny. Like we're living this lifestyle of drinking out of mason jars and playing banjos and whatnot. <laughs> So we're kind of doing a lifestyle out there when we're acting. That's, that's the way to, you got to get in a character, right? That's the right. way to do it. Yep, that's the way to do it. So you're exactly one hour before the first cart. What are you in the middle of? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. I said you're exactly one hour before the first cart's coming through. Are you mm. still in makeup? Are you still getting ready? Or are you already on the scene waiting? Um, we're usually the, out there an hour before, um, usually taking pictures, you know, having fun out there, just setting up for the night, hiding our stuff. So that's really about what there is to it before we open, I have to say. Yeah, there, there's a huge difference between Field of Screams when we go in early September versus October 28th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's like when I went for St. Patty's. I was not expecting that second parking lot. Yeah, huge yeah. output oh, yeah. for St. Patty's Day. That was amazing. Yeah, that was crazy. I was not expecting the turnout. Nobody you know. was. The weather yeah. was nice. That's what it was, probably. Mm -hmm. 
And then you had the third attraction open. That was so cool. And how yeah, far? Yeah, it was interesting to see Nocturnal open for this event. I wonder if they'll do that for halfway. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. Hmm. Um, hey, you better simmer down there. What? You th- actually think you're going to be able to walk through a haunt? Isn't it in like May? Yeah, I think first week, second week. <laughs> Listen, a lot can happen. He said it's healing quickly. <laughs> My, my foot swelling just won't go down. That's the biggest issue right now. Uh, all right. So you use a rifle. How long did it take you to get used to using the rifle? Um. So I grew up in like a farm ridden area. So I shot a lot of guns when I was younger. But um, getting into it was 2019 was my first time I ever used the rifle. I was supposed to go to the chainsaw scene that night. The managers were tossing the idea around and they just put in the dinner party scene, which previously was the gun room. Um, and they were like, are you still interested in using a gun? Because this scene is still, you know, you're able to use one in here. And I was like, let's give it a, let's give it a go. But um, it, it, when I first started, I used to wear like very heavy, like earplugs. So I couldn't hear myself talk a lot. And I noticed, like, I sounded, like, <laughs> drunk half the time. And my character was, like, this person I wasn't supposed to be. So once I found out, like, what works for me, what, like, here uh, protection throughout the night to wear. And, um, what am I trying to say? It, it was very like very loud. I wasn't expecting it to be as loud as it was indoors because then you know the managers were okay in it. I never heard it before. So when the first group came through, I shot the gun and I almost like scared myself with the customers. So I had to get used to doing that every time for when I would pull a trigger to know, hey, this is gonna be like very loud. And there's people that come through like, oh, like my ears are ringing. I'm like, yeah, me too, man. I'm just like mm-hmm. trying to work with what I got here. But out in the redneck scene, it works very well because we're out there in the woods. Again, very hickish. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I got used to it very fast. It's been like my main thing for the past couple of years there. I I personally love gunshots and haunts. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's an instant startle. A couple haunts used to have a couple of them and they got rid of it. So I'm just happy to still see that happening. Yeah, especially in, like, factory haunts, you can't exactly do what you can with, like, farmland, like Field of Screens has. Yes. So, when you're able to do it, it's nice to have that. (laughs) It it adds to the scene. I mean... Oh, yeah. It's very rare we see it now. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So, my next question was, how long did it take to get used to the sound? It took me... um, Den is still difficult to do. It's still, like, a loud pop every single time. So that's, like, not much I can get used to when it comes to that. But outdoors, it, it, it came to me relatively fast. Because, like I said, I grew up shooting a lot of guns. So um, just living the lifestyle out there, you, you just kind of, like, drift away from the sound. You're just doing your own thing, I guess. Yeah, shooting the guns normal, drinking the whiskeys normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you heading the East Coast Haunters Convention? I want to. I want to uh, go out there actually as my character. Oh, okay. so we're gonna oh, see a ton cool. of that. By oh, way. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah, we will be out there Saturday and Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. if I go out, I hope to see you guys there. I'll be the one in the wheelchair with the <laughs> giant red two H's on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be pushing me as my on my own gimbal. You're on your own, dude. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's something that I've been really excited for since it, you know, came out. Um, I know all the local haunts are sponsors <laughs> of it, so it's it's going to be a blast. And I can't wait to get, like, three whole shows of footage for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll be cool, especially um, they're doing the pre-haunt tour. Yeah. And I wonder if you'll the screams one day. I'm going to see them in the lineup since they're around in the area. Probably. Probably. I'm <laughs> I'm interested to see how they came up with that lineup, but what do I know? Yeah. All right. 
Whoa, where did that go? What is your favorite part about working at Field of Screams? My favorite part about working at Field of Screams is some of the friendships I made out there. They're more than just friends. They're almost like family to me. Um, a lot of them are like brothers and sisters to me. Um, we all go out there to do the same thing. So it's nice to see like, you know, a bunch of what we would be called normally like weirdos all gather together and make this amazing thing is something that was pretty magical to me. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite part about Field of Screams. Like, the haunts are amazing. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. It's just... It's the, the people. The people we've made friendships with over the last mm -hmm. nine years of doing this. and Yeah. I mean, I think I've been through Field of Screams 20 times. Yeah. Probably about 20. Yeah, about that. You've been through one more than me. Yes. You're, you're our well, field vet now. Even the, when I was there at St. <laughs> Patty's Day, they were... People were asking about you I know, and yeah. where you were. Abandoned is where I was. She abandoned me to go do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you abandoned me to go do fucking shit. Right. Nope. Don't do fucking shit. <laughs> uh, any funny interactions with victims from this past season? Oh, victims. Well, um, we don't necessarily... Um, have any interesting interactions in den mainly it's a lot of people running away when they hear the gunshot but rednecks they think that we're drunk uh some people come through drunk so they think they can start like um talking to us talking back and whatnot and this starts an in interesting in interaction of who can get like um who can tell each other off the most basically it's not like in a rude way playing still playing the character so I have to say, like, those times are the best. And it usually ends up with the customer being like, ooh, okay, sits down, gets humbled, and the wagon goes on. <laughs> but those are the most fun interactions we have out there is people who think they can, like, talk back to the rednecks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Field has that unique ability to completely involve the cart by jumping on the cart. So. Oh, yeah. Jumping on, getting in with them. Yeah. That's why it's one of my favorites because there are there's hay rides out there where it's just on the sides and mm -hmm. it just it just doesn't work. <laughs> or you it's have to, yeah. or you have to hold on to dear life because you're going so fast. Oh my god, we went to one. Yeah. I think it was two seasons ago. The hay ride was doing forty. Wow! Like, it didn't stop at a single scene, and we were moving. <laughs> like my, I'd take my hat off. We were going so fast. Yeah. I was like, wow, <laughs> all right. I understand input output, but this is a little ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Your two mile hayride just got done in seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, I that was that was crazy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is a hard question, and it might start battles between you and friends, but what's your favorite attraction at Field of the Screams? My favorite all time, definitely the hayride. Okay. I say it's called I say it's called Field of Screams for a reason. <laughs> yeah, the, the hayride's magical. <laughs> it is. It is a fun time. <laughs> I think mine is still Frightmare Asylum. Frightmare is definitely intense. Mine's Den. Yeah, hers is Den. Yeah, I like to play around in Den when I'm able to, but um, Rednecks just call me home. So. <laughs> These <laughs> are my people. Open, I'm out there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What is your favorite part and least favorite part about the haunt industry? You've been in it long enough. My favorite part, I have to say again, everybody coming together, working as a team, like some of the friendships that are made. My least favorite is the people who come in and they think they're better than everybody. Um, I think everybody is unique in their own way and that they're the best in like their own ways. So to see somebody come in and be like, oh, no, I'm like, I should be the face of this company. Like, I'm going to take over. And it's just it turns people away almost like to even be around somebody like that yeah there's cocky so people. yeah what i didn't say anything yeah you didn't say nothing <laughs> she didn't do fucking shit 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Cockiness is a pain in the ass. It's, it works yeah. better when everyone works together. Exactly. All right. So, do you have any favorite horror movies that are your go to watches? Like, it's raining, you're home for the next four hours, you got some chips or popcorn ready. What's the movie you're throwing in? The original Texas Chainsaw. That was my first horror movie I've ever watched. And it changed who I am as a person, I think, forever. It, it's one of those things where it's not a gore fest to scare you. It uh, leaves a lot to the imagination, which I think is far more horrifying. But it's my comfort movie to remember like what got me involved in like all this stuff to want to get out and like do this spooky stuff. Good answer. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. As you can see, I have a problem with horror too, especially <laughs> Freddy. Yeah. Same thing with me. That movie changed my life. I mean, 40 mm-hmm. years ago. That's a long yeah. time. And I watched it too. I was like three. I just watched it a couple of years ago. <laughs> the first night on Elm Street? No. Uh, Texas. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, that one. You just watched that last year. <laughs> Yeah, this one only saw Texas last year. Wow. <laughs> uh, Nightmare I saw in the movie theater. Yeah, Nightmare you saw in the movie theater. I was too young. <laughs> Tiny, Freddy or Jason? I have to say Freddy. I like Suck it, Freddy. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Jason. <laughs> Me, uh, I don't know if you know, but we do another podcast with a friend of mine, uh, the Horror Shed Podcast. Subscribe now. But um, it's all horror. So it's, Mm -hmm. you know, paranormal, true crime, whatever the hell we feel like covered. He's also a Jason cosplayer and a huge Jason fan. So we battle all the time. So every time I can say, suck it, Jason, that goes directly to him. (laughs) I'm I'm gonna make him just wake you up in the full cosplay one day. Oh no, <laughs> I will have instant heart attack. No, even if he just rang the doorbell and I answered the door with him, co- no, I'd have instant heart attack. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, he's won like five awards for his cosplay, so it it really looks like Jason. So uh-uh. that's awesome. We did a photo shoot for Night of Terror because they were having a big Friday the Thirteenth thing, and uh, mm-hmm. she wouldn't get off the porch. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. like it's literally Brian. You watched him put everything on. I'm okay until he like <laughs> goes into that fast walking pace, and he's like mm-hmm. just. Like you could see his eyeballs looking at you, and uh uh-uh, uh, it just brings back too many memories. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, that's awesome. Peace out. <laughs> so, this next question's hard, especially since you work at Field and they're open the earliest and usually the latest. But, do you have any bucket list haunts you would like to get to? I really want to experience Reaper's Revenge this year, as well as um, the Dent Schoolhouse in Ohio. Those are the two that I would like to visit the most. (laughs) So I'm hoping to get that done this year. Yeah. Reaper's is a good time. Yeah. I'm hoping to get the Dent this season. We say, we'll see. Yeah, Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, I know. I almost did... I was an hour away from Dent on Halloween, mm-hmm. and wow. I just wasn't feeling 100%, and mm-hmm. it was hour drive there, hour drive back, and I had to be back on, it was a military base I was working at, and I had to be back there super early, so I was like, you know what, I'm not going to do it, and I regret not doing it this whole fucking time. I knew you would. <laughs> I mean, it was Halloween day, I should have just fucking yeah. did it, but I'm, I'm making up for it. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> So, have you been to any other haunts in the area since you've started haunting? Um, yes, I have been to Shocktoberfest in Jason's Woods. Um, and they're, they're enjoyable to go through, I have to say. But those are really the only ones that I've experienced outside of Field of Screams, because during haunt season, I spend a lot of my time at Field of Screams, so it takes up a lot of the time to go visit other haunts. Yeah, they're uh, they're open the earliest and close the latest. And yeah. <laughs> you guys go into full weeks at the end, Yeah, right? Yeah. It's usually like the second week of all, uh, September to the second week of November, I think. Yeah. 
and uh, HHN's opening August 30th this year. Yes. Opening August I start, saw. baby. Let's start this shit earlier. Let's go. I'm down for <laughs> June starts. Let's do it. I am sure, <laughs> like, you can see both two ways with that going the first week. Nobody there. Yeah. Or it could be, like, the people that have the haunts want to get that in before they start their season right so it could be really busy well when we go for media night it's the second light open and it's there's still a crowd people come yeah. out people do head out that early they really do they do not just psychopaths like us there's normal people out there yeah so i mean it proves to the point that you open earlier you're gonna get people yeah um, so what do you, do you think there will be a new thing for 2024 for the industry? Like any new themes that you've seen or um, any new ideas? I mean, every year they come out with the next best thing. Um, I'm not sure what it will be, but I know that it's going to like shock. Um, Cause every year that I've experienced these the scenes being built they're always stepping the game up it never gets worse so i'm hoping for a pretty pretty nice looking set this oh, year. I, i'm sure those guys are insane <laughs> oh yeah it, it, i don't know how the hell you change 40 percent every year i really don't but they do yeah. yeah and not just like internally like the change to the den outside to just add to it you know I like what I mean? That. Like, mm -hmm. it's just so cool. It, and now the projector show and the axe throwing, and you can spend all oh, night yeah. and feel the screams. You really can. And then they add yeah, those it's bars. Almost like the stuff comes in overnight. It's interesting. Like, we'll be there on a Friday and be like, "Hey, you know, it'd be an interesting addition it's to say to the manager for a joke." And next thing you know, you come back the next day and you're like, "Hey, look, they actually added this thing overnight." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's 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 a special place, and like I said, um, it's really been like a home to us. Yes, every year, um, just it's like a homecoming. It opens up the season, you know what I mean? It's just like yeah, that special time where we get to see everyone and hang out. I almost missed the attractions last year because I was talking too fucking much. I know you never <laughs> talk. And, and yeah, and I was like, "Shit, we gotta get to Nocturnal. They're gonna start shutting down." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just guys get to feel the screams this season. That's all it's I gotta really say. So I see your shirt. What's that shirt? I see Ghost Face. I oh, like that shirt. It's face. The, the Brady Bunch, but the it's hard. Oh, oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, I have a lot of horror apparel. My yeah. whole life has changed getting into all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing Pazuzu right now. That's awesome. And I got a Jaws shirt out there, too, that you got me for the birthday. Yep. I forgot I even had it because I got hurt right after my birthday. I was, she pulled that shirt out. I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot I had that. <laughs> I got Baby Yoda. Yeah, you get Baby Yoda. She gets Baby Yoda everything. Uh, well, you got any more questions, hon? I don't. It was fun. You don't? That's it? You're just done? <laughs> you don't do fucking shit. I don't, um, I don't do fucking shit. So, do you have any social media around Tiny? Um, I don't. I don't have any character pages, unfortunately. But um, I do have some fun stories about what I do, like, as my role with the gun out of the field, if you would like to hear. Hell yeah, go! Um, so when I was in there in 2019, when they were thinking about adding a guy to that room to do the gun, which me, they were debating on which gun they were going to use. They have a whole arsenal out there that like of these prop blank guns that you can use. And they were trying to see what could fit the den being a Victorian style mansion and, um, you know, just grungy old house compared to backwoods rednecks we want to separate them almost so th originally they tried an m1911 which is a nine millimeter cartridge instead of the eight millimeter we currently use in there and he said he jumped out went pop 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 and it was just way too loud but that was originally supposed to be the gun that was used for that room for my character being the hunter in that dinner party scene That's to think um 
without doing the gun room, I would have never became a redneck. Using the redneck gun showed the management that, like, hey, we should get this guy out there. Like, he's a he's going to be a beast out there jumping out that shack. So it, it like really spitballed my honk career. Just, just a random idea one day. Instead of giving me a chainsaw, they gave me a firearm and said, kind of just make it work. Be this guy hunting people for these people. Be the enforcer of the house. And here we are today with, I have, I have people who have stickers of me. They've been, they sent me like a fan art of my characters. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Just coming out for like a minute, seeing me jump out and act. People have fallen in love with this character. And I constantly receive text messages like, you're tiny, aren't you? You're that big guy out in the hair. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you're so cool. Like, and there's been actors that say like, I'm inspiration to them too. So it's been really special to do, be able to do what I do. <laughs> that's awesome that's, that's a great awesome. story awesome damn man fan art i want some fan art it's awesome too because i have my slaughterhouse character my bull too and he barely gets seen yes the slaughterhouse scene is very dark strobe lights red lights so you barely see like anything on me you know like the colors of my outfit and whatnot but this person stared at me the whole time and got an accurate look of like what i looked like and was able to color this character perfectly to what they looked like and i was like wow and that's a tough room that was you, awesome you can't yeah. really see shit in there and it's intense yeah. it's quick moving like it's that's yeah. impressive yeah so it's been amazing to see what people that enjoy these haunts they fall in love with these characters that we're creating that were like you know are we ever really going to get anywhere with it like we want to be like you know we all kind of want to be the next Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees with our characters. <laughs> <laughs> and to see that we're having fans behind these ideas that we're creating is just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's awesome. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That is nice. Yeah. I, it's, it, it's just, it's, it's such a small industry, mm -hmm. but I think it has such a huge following. But it's it's weird. It it's so weird because it is tiny. If you mm. think about it from like a YouTube aspect, how many channels are all haunts? Not a lot. Yeah. But then you have bigger channels that do other things and add the haunts, and that really multiplies their views. So it actually is kind of bigger than you think about. Yeah. Nothing to add there. No, it it, it is. It's kind of like the optical world. Yeah, kind of like the optical world. Everybody knows everyone, and mm -hmm. some get along, some don't. But I think it's us. It's oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think more get along than don't get along. Oh yeah, yeah. But I was gonna say it's awesome to see where the haunt industry has come to over time, from going from black walls and a guy in a jumpsuit and Michael Myers mask to these full blown sets and scenes that you see, like a hospital ward. Like, you would have never seen that back in even just, like, 20 years ago. Like, it wasn't as... It was detailed, cardboard cutouts, like, man. 20 yeah, years ago, it was, like, today. cardboard cutouts. Yeah. <laughs> like, boo. <laughs> it's taken more and more to scare people, too, I've realized recently than um, it was when I first started. People are getting a lot more hardened, especially um, teenagers, and stuff that comes through. They're not as easy to scare now, I, I realize, as they were for yeah, when I first started. because they've been coming through since they were little. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. it's just it's just the way of the times. You get used to stuff. I'm still, yeah. a, I'm still a chicken shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. We all know you're a chicken shit. Yeah, she's still jumpable. It's hilarious. She still screams. She. I wish I could. I mean, I just really... I gotta try and retrain my brain or something. Try it. I don't have to, like... <laughs> I just jump. But like the scares aren't important to me. It's about the set design. It's about mm -hmm. the makeup. It's about the artistry. It's about the team building. That's what I Yeah, but about. you can still enjoy that and still have that little jolt. I never jolted though. That's because you're looking too hard for the the actors. <laughs> no. Cuz I've been through the shit before I could walk. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. Oh, I know. <laughs> so what are your goals for the upcoming season you got any new ideas any fun ideas you want to try or um i don't want to give too much away don't but it's gonna be something to. <laughs> That's cool. stay tuned 
Yep. Got to get your tickets. Got to get your tickets to feel the screams. But I want to say something about uh, set design again. Um, in the Dead of Darkness, they have a taxidermy scene. I was in that room the first night it was in operation. I played the taxidermist, and it's neat to see on the walls. You're rushing through there. You really don't have time to look, but there's a there's a doctor portrait um, of all these different doctors that graduated this class, and they're creating this story of this doctor went nuts and is doing this to these people they have one guy circled and the rest of them are all x'd out meaning this is the he's going down this list and killing all of his classmates and that's the bodies that you see in there ah. and that's how he's doing it. it's, it's really neat to like you don't see certain stuff when you're walking through you're worried about the guy behind the table not let's worry like on the walls but to know they put in that much detail is insane <laughs> and I usually catch that. I haven't. Well, it's still a new room, so I haven't been through yeah. it as many times. So I'll see it. Like I still love that prop, that sewn together prop they have hanging on the wall there. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Yeah, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. I'm like, that's new, and that's fucking awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, then there's a giant fucking tree in the room. One of those rooms too. Now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It was snowing the last Christmas we were there. In there, that was insane. Yes. It's funny because I went there before and acted, and I didn't know they changed stuff for, like, that event. I would just go straight to my room, <laughs> and I would see these characters down in the break room that I'd never seen before. I'm like, oh, interesting. It's, like, another actor from, like, one of the other uh, haunts on property, but it's just a complete new room that they put up just right under our noses just yeah. for us to find out, and it's nuts. It's so funny that they hide it from you guys, too. They're like, oh, yeah. they're going to see it when they walk through. <laughs> we get little teasers, but we don't get much. <laughs> yeah. It's because assholes like me will sit there and prod you until you tell me. <laughs> yeah. So, do you get a chance to go through the haunt at least once um, during the season? Yeah, so in the beginning of the year, they um, the, all the attractions would take um, a day at the end of the night to go through each other. So like one night, um, Asylum would close last and all the, all the three other attractions would go through and that would be the same for every other. So that would be our time to go see our fellow actors act and also see the new sets and scenes that they put up for the year. That's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. I always wondered that. There you go. See, you're doing stuff. I'm going to take that short down. My back hurts from carrying this woman. <laughs> this would suck without you. I need you, so you do stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, Tiny. We'll push you right out the door in that wheelchair. <laughs> you guys see what I deal with here? This is what I deal with. This is what I've been dealing with. A month <laughs> home. A month home. Yes. Ah, oh, uh, no. Oh, my God. All right, uh, when are we open for Halfway to Halloween? We might as well prop that up right now. I believe it's May 12th. I believe so. Let's confirm that. I think um, you're right. Let's see here. I have the power of the internet. I just feel like there's one oh, every not weekend. May 12th, May 4th. That's I'm a little right. bit off. May 4th, yep. May 4th, and that's the last time I feel the screens will be open until September 13th. Yes. I need oh. to take that day off. That's interesting. That's Friday at 13th. Yeah. This will be... Oh, okay. Oh. So guys, May 4th, you can get your tickets now, and I believe they have some sales going on on social media, if I checked correctly. <laughs> So make sure you get that promo code. Like I always say, follow every haunt social media because this shit pops up. Random sales pop up. Um, not just being a haunt fanatic, but as a consumer, sales help. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have to hit 40 of these things in a six-week period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you buy tickets for the... Let's say You should be able to. Yeah, tickets yeah. are on sale for their regular season. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. Everybody's listening. I know. 
<laughs> well, I've been talking about having like haunts should start selling tickets earlier mm-hmm. because it's not twenty dollars anymore. So when you're trying to take your family of four, it's a two hundred dollar yeah. night. So if you yeah. have time to prepare for that. Instead of, you know, shit, we got to buy five costumes and then haunt tickets. You know, it's out mm-hmm. of the way. Yeah. Because I know I've done my homework and these websites don't charge more to do it in the off season. They just charge when their tickets are sold. So mm-hmm. I'm on pro. Let's start selling haunt tickets uh, now. <laughs> yeah. So Field of Screams goes until November 9th, 9th and then the blackouts the 15th. Yep. Yeah, they're starting September 13th, Friday the 13th. Oh, boy. Yeah. So get your tickets now. Tiny, thank you so much for hanging out, going over some haunts. Thank you. You were awesome. Sorry it took so long, but you know how this shit works. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. I've been talking to him for like a month now, trying to get him, trying to work us on here. So I was like, you know what? Sunday, we're getting it on. (laughs) I will enter everything and be done. But thank you so much for coming on. It's been a, yeah, it's been a blast. This has old. been fun for the books. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot fun. of shit about guns and haunts, too. Yes. Did you learn something today? I did. Okay, yeah. Guys, this has been Halloween Haunts 365, where every day is haunt season. We'll see you next Monday. And make sure you subscribe and watch our shorts. Bye. 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 Night after night. Halloween Hunt 365 Productions.